Good day, students, and welcome to today's session in which we will discuss original acquisition of ownership. Please take note that this will only contain a brief overview of the specific study unit. You are expected to master the entire content of the specific chapter in your own time. Before we focus specifically on original acquisition of ownership, it is important that you understand the difference between original acquisition of ownership and derivative acquisition of ownership. Now, in the case of original acquisition of ownership, there is no cooperation from a predecessor in title. There is no transfer of ownership. It is not limited to things belonging to no one. And examples of original acquisition of ownership would be in the case of accession, prescription, and expropriation of a thing owned by another, but not to transfer to the transfer of, of ownership. In the case of derivative acquisition of ownership, ownership is transferred from one person to another. So it occurs with the cooperation of the predecessor in title. The right which the transferee obtains is thus derived from the former owner. The right is transferred to the new owner with the advantages and disadvantages attached to that right. Now examples of original acquisition of ownership is appropriation, accession, manufacturing, mixing and fusing, acquisition of fruits, expropriation, treasure trove, and acquisitive prescription. We will now focus on each of these examples individually. Appropriation. Now, to acquire ownership by means of appropriation, there must be physical control, the intention to become the owner of a corp corporeal thing not belonging to anyone else. So the nature and extent of the physical control is important. Mere holding is not enough. The control must enable the acquirer to exercise the rights associated with ownership. Now, the example of appropriation and the implementation of these specific requirements is well illustrated in Rick versus Mills. Now, in Rick versus Mills, the court had to consider the meaning of the physical control requirement. In this case, Mills was attempting to remove a large condenser from the Antipolis, a shipwreck abandoned by its owners. He tied a rope with a buoy to a large condenser in the engine room. Together with its attached pipes and contents, the condenser weighed about 63 tons. Rick and Hartman started to cut sections of the condenser loose to remove and sell them. On appeal, the court sided with Rick, saying that Mills hadn't sufficiently established the degree of control required to amount to possession. The court held that it was not enough to simply mark something out as Mills had done with a rope and a boy. Possession must be of such a nature that the possessor must be in a position to deal with the subject at his pleasure, to the exclusion of others. Rick's appeal was therefore successful as he had actual control of the object as opposed to merely marking up. So as a result of this, you can see the importance that mere holding is not enough. The control must enable the acquirer to exercise the rights associated with ownership as illustrated in Rick versus Mills. Now, another example of original acquisition of ownership is accession. Now, accession takes place when an accessory thing becomes merged with a principal thing, with the result that the two things form one entity. The accessory thing loses its independence and becomes part of the principal thing. The owner of the principal thing is thus the owner of the composite thing. Now let's have a look at accession of movables to movables. This occurs when an, where an accessory movable becomes attached to a principal movable in such a way that a single entity is formed and the ownership of the principal thing extends over the accessory thing which has lost its independence. Examples of this would be a painting. 
the painter becomes the owner of the canvas belonging to someone else that he painted on. Added that the painting is more valuable than the canvas. If a person writes on someone else's paper, the writer is the owner of the written piece. The owner of the paper must be com compensated for the paper. Now let's have a look at a session of movables to immovables. Now what is important to take note here is the maxim superficie solo said it. It stipulates that anything that is attached to the land accedes to the land. This may take place either by means of planting and sowing or by building. In the case of planting and sowing, a session occurs when the plants or the seeds take root and start to draw nourishment. The owner of the soil will then be the owner of the plants. In the case of a building, if a movable thing becomes attached to land in such a manner that it loses its independence and forms a new entity with the land, the composite thing belongs to the owner of the land. Now, there are three requirements that has been formulated by courts to ascertain whether a session has taken place. And the three requirements are you have to look at the nature and purpose of the attached thing. Secondly, you must look at the manner and degree of the attachment. Thirdly, you must have a look at the intention of the person annexing it. Now, in Theatre Investments versus Butcher Brothers, the court reiterated that the intention of the annexer is the most important factor to consider and that the nature and purpose of the attachment and the degree of detachment are mere factors contributing in ascertaining the intention of the annexo. Please see your study guide for examples of a session of movables to immovables and how the courts implemented these requirements on the specific facts to reach its conclusion. There are plenty of examples in your study guide, so please, please have a look. It's very important. Then another form of acquisition, original acquisition of ownership is the acquisition. Acquisition of ownership of fruits takes place by means of separation or gathering. So before separation, fruits are accessories of the principal thing and therefore the property of the owner of the principal thing. Upon separation, fruits become independent things, which as such can form the objects of ownership and become susceptible to acquisition of ownership. Please see your study guide for a distinction between natural fruits and civil fruits. Another example of original acquisition of ownership is that of manufacturing or otherwise known as specificatio. Now ownership is acquired by the unauthorized production of a completely new thing using a thing belonging to another. For example, a person making wine from another person's grapes will become the owner of the wine even though it is not his or her grapes that he or she used. Or in the case of oil from another person's olives, the owner becomes the oil, owner of the oil, irrespective of the fact that the olives did not belong to him. When one person makes a new product from material that belongs wholly or in part to another person, the manufacturing process must irretrievably alter the thing that is used and the combination must give rise to a new product. The material used in the manufacturing process must not belong to the maker, as we've seen in the example that I've mentioned earlier. And there must be no agreement governing the use of the materials. In this case, the owner of the material would have a claim of compensation against the owner of the new thing that was created for the value of the material, but not for the thing that was created. So in the case of, if you have a look at the case of an individual who made wine with someone else's grapes, the individual whose grapes it is may 
institute a claim for compensation against the owner of the new thing, in other words, the owner of the wine. And the owner of the materials, the owner of the grapes can thus claim compensation for the value of the material, but not for the thing that was created. In other words, not for the wine that was created, but only for the grapes that was used. However, if the new thing can be restored to its original form, then ownership vests in the owner of the material. Another example of original acquisition of ownership is that of Confusio ex commixtio, also known as mingling and mixing. So it is where movable, thing, where movable things belonging to different persons are mixed together without the consent of the owners and in such a way that the movables cannot be separated to its previous state or the parts fully identified. The mixture becomes the joint property of the former owners in proportion to the value of the things included in the mixture. So an example of mingling and mixing would be the mixing of grain or the mixing of feathers or the mixing together of liquid materials. Another example of original acquisition of ownership is that of a treasure trove. Now, where there is hidden treasure that is valuable, movable, corporeal things, if it's hidden for so long that it is impossible to determine ownership, the hidden treasure is acquired either by the landowner or and by the accidental finder together. The landowner and the accidental finder will become owners of the treasures in half shares. Physical control by the finder is required, but not by the owner of the land. Another example of another example of original acquisition of ownership is that of expropriation. So where the state acquires expropriation is where the state acquires of a movable or immovable thing without the consent of the owner against payment of compensation. Section 25 of the Constitution addresses land reform and it lays down regulations and procedures addressing when and how land may be expropriated by the state. So a valid expropriation would be if it is non-arbitrary, if it is in, the, in terms of the law of general application, if it is for a public purpose or in the public interest, and it must be against compensation. Another form of original acquisition of ownership is that of acquisitive prescription. So this will be where a person who controls a thing openly and as if he or she were the owner for an uninterrupted continuous period of 30 years becomes its owner. So if you have acquired land and you have controlled the land openly as if you were the owner for an uninterrupted continuous period of 30 years, you will have acquired original acquisition of ownership. So after completion of the prescription period and if all the requirements of prescription are met, the possessor will become the owner of the thing. Now there are two different acts regarding the regarding acquisitive prescription. The first one is the Prescription Act of 1969, and it applies to prescriptive periods beginning at beginning on the 1st of December 1970. And prior to that, there is the Prescription Act of 1943. I've highlighted the differences between the two acts in this column. As you can see, under the Prescription Act of 1943, acquisitive prescription is the acquisition of ownership by the possession of another person's movable or immovable property continuously for 30 years, nec vi, nec clum, and nec precario. Whereas in 
terms of the Prescription Act of 1969, a person shall by prescription become the owner of a thing which he has possessed openly and as if he were the owner thereof for an uninterrupted period of 30 years or for a period which together with any periods for which such thing was so possessed by his predecessors in title constitutes an uninterrupted period of 30 years. Now, prescription can be interrupted. Now, in the case of interruption, the period of prescription which has already run is terminated. And the period of prescription must begin to run anew. Now, interruption can occur in two forms, natural interruption or judicial interruption. Now, natural interruption is where Prescription has been terminated as a result of voluntary loss of possession. If the possessor waits too long before taking legal steps to regain his or her possession. Or if the situation involving an act of God prevents the possessor from regaining possession within 12 months. Judicial when legal proceedings are initiated by the true owner against the acquirer, wherein ownership is based on the return of ownership rather than on a claim for compensation for unlawful possession. The mere service of process does not permanently interrupt the cause of prescription. Interruption of prescription occurs only if the person who lays claim to ownership succeeds in carrying his or her claim to the final judgment. Now, prescription can also be suspended. Now, what is suspension? Suspension is the temporary suspension of a period of prescription. Here, the period which has already run does not lapse, but the cause is suspended and can recommence at a later date. Suspension of the prescription period takes place in favor of a number of persons whom the law wants to protect by not allowing prescription to run against them. And these categories of persons are minors, insane persons, married women with retention of the husband's marital, marital power, persons absent from the country because of war or those who are employed by the state, or fide commiss commissaries in the case where a fiduciary fiduciary has alienated Fide commissary goods without the power to alienate until such time as the fide commissary goods are distributed. For information on the method of calculation in the case of suspension, please consult your textbook, your study guide, and this concludes today's session.